Today's scripture reading is Luke 6, 36 through 38. It can be found on the overhead screen and in your pew Bibles on page 1021. Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your life we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover the peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The word of the Lord. <laughs> I feel like it's been a weekend of generosity. You know, we are so blessed to have Stacy and his talents in our midst. And he comes up to us a few weeks ago and he says, I have these CDs. And maybe recognizing that time is not on his side as technology and music goes. Um, but we still have a few more years left of CDs, right? He says, how can we use these um, to help someone else? So we have these gifts of CDs where all of the proceeds are going to our Christmas fund. Stacy, it is a joy to work with you and beside you. Yesterday, another opportunity of generosity that I just came upon. The Presbytery of Boise met yesterday at First Presbyterian Church downtown. And we learned about an initiative happening at Southminster Presbyterian Church. Southminster is raising funds to pay off medical debt for Idahoans. Uh, and I am learning about how medical debt works, but they are buying debt from debt collectors in the, in the hopes of the reality that we can write letters to those uh, patients, our neighbors here in Idaho, and say, Presbyterians at Southminster have paid off your debt. Well, we got really excited about this yesterday in the Presbytery meeting. So the Presbytery, like, like this, voted that we would participate with Southminster. So friends, yesterday, the Boise Presbytery voted with your dollars, we paid for the capita, um, that we together are going to join Southminster and Presbyterians in Ada and Canyon counties are paying off $1.5 million worth of medical debt in our community. to be part of it. Uh, so while I was at this Presbytery meeting yesterday, John Pickerel, the Reverend John Pickerel, was sitting behind me. Now some of you know John. John was on the Presbytery committee that helped form Covenant Presbyterian Church 40 years ago. Now I know John's health is pretty good. He goes on to tell me yesterday, you know the Confession of 1967, I flew down to Salt Lake to help write this. I said, John, how old are you exactly? <laughs> but he still has this twinkle in his eye. One of John's biggest gifts to covenant were these trees that we cut down. <laughs> now, John is a good pastor who loves Jesus, and who loves Kevin. And he's like, Kevin, that new sign looks really good out there. But you cut down my trees! Do you know the story about those trees? And I said, John, these were your Christmas trees that you planted on the corner of the property. And with that twinkle in his eye, he said, yes, 
and they grew up to hide the church in the background. You needed to cut those down, but I am angry. I'm not angry because you cut them down. I'm angry because it feels like it was only two or three years ago that I planted them. Kevin, where did that time go? Time is like that, huh? Just 40 years ago, 40 is like one more year than I'm alive, right? So in some ways it feels like I'm alive, but for those of you who are here 40 years ago, it may just feel like yesterday. And time is like this, right? Sometimes time goes by really quickly. Sometimes if your last name is Starcher and you're seven or five, Time goes by very slowly waiting for trunk or treat, but very quickly we have moved on to how many days before Christmas. Time can move slowly. When you're 15 years old waiting for your driver's license to taste that first drop of freedom where you can take your date out by yourself, time can go by. Slowly. Sometimes time moves a little more quickly. When you're almost 40 years old and you look yourself in the mirror and you see a lot less hair and a few more pounds and you say, oh my gosh, I'm almost 40. Where did the prime of my youth go? Where have I invested my time? But I think it is the more wiser saints among us who are in their 70s or 80s or 90s who understand the depth of the mystery of time. For I know that when I have the great privilege of being with some of our older members, I hear the stories of holiness, of sacredness in individual lives. And every one of those saints tell me, Kevin, enjoy it because it goes by so quickly. This is the mystery of time. This is the blessing of time today. Our second scripture reading comes to us from the book of Ruth. Now, Ruth, the story originates about 3,000 and a couple hundred years ago. This is a really old story that has been passed down by the forefathers of our faith, but it's a story that speaks to ordinary families like me and you. It's the story of Ruth and her mother Naomi, who in their own blessing of time experiences the tragedies of life, and they experience the celebration of life as as Ruth meets Boaz and there's love to celebrate. So let's pick up here when time was probably moving a little faster for Ms. Ruth. Chapter 4, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when they came together, the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a redeemer. And may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, Ruth, who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. And then Naomi took the child laid him in her bosom, and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this is a very old story that happened before our time here on earth. It is a story about people who lived and breathed just like me and you, who loved to experience the pain of death, who experience the joys of childbirth. The story of God's people. If you're familiar with the story of Ruth and how I was very intentional in 
sharing the lineage of those who came after Obed. Because if you were paying attention, there's Boaz, a good Hebrew, married to his wife, Ruth, who is a good Moabite, one of those other people. God takes this union and blesses it. And they bear a son, and his name is Obed. And Obed is the father of Jesse, who is the father of David. And you all know who David is? King David of Israel. And you know who is one of the progenies of King David in the story of our Christian lives? Jesus! See, it is Jesus who is already here in this story of Ruth and Naomi and Boaz ordinary people like me and you. Jesus is there. You see, God exists and is at work in life before Ruth's family, during the lives of Ruth's family, and continues to be at work after Ruth and Boaz and Obed have gone to their graves. This is a story not just of specific people, but it's a story of how God works before our time, during our time, and after our time. And as we live our years experiencing the mystery of life that we don't always fully comprehend, we are part of something much bigger than ourselves. We are part of God's story, which was before and now and is to come. In some ways, this is a time warp, and our brains struggle to wrap our minds around it. But it does bring me to this verse in Isaiah, which helps me think about time, where the prophet says, The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. The grass withers. The flower of your life will fade. The word of the Lord endures forever before our lives, during our lives, and after our lives. We are part of something much bigger than ourselves. And today we celebrate All Saints Sunday, which is the Sunday that comes right after November 1st. Some of you may be wondering, are we Catholic these days? Maybe, in the deepest sense of the word. But the story of Halloween that we celebrated this past week, uh, Halloween comes to us from All Hallows Eve, on October 31st, right? All Hallows Eve <coughs> is the day in the life of the church before All Saints Day on November 1st. For 1,400 years, Christians of a variety of sorts have been celebrating November 1st as the day where we remember all of the saints. So this pagan holiday that we celebrate on October 31st finds its roots in Christianity. All Hallows Eve, all Hallow, Halo, Holy, Halloween, all Hallows Eve. So the Feast of All Saints Day really happens on November 1st. And we celebrate that in worship on the Sunday immediately following. All Saints Day goes all the way back. There's an Eastern bishop named Ephraim Cyrus, who in 373 referred to the feasts of all martyrs, all those who had been killed in service in their witness to the Lord. Pope Boniface is building a church in Rome in 609. And he moves the day of All Martyrs Day to May 13th, Remembering that that's when Ephraim Cyrus had celebrated All Martyrs Day, and by 837, Pope Gregory IV declares that November 1st, we will observe All Saints Day. Now, the Catholic friends in our communities on November 2nd will celebrate All Souls Day. So a little bit of theological trivia for you to play at trivia night when you're down at the public house. <laughs> All Saints Day, November 1st, 
for our Catholic friends, this is the day where we remember all of those who have been beatified as saints. For our Catholic friends, the next day, All Souls Day, is for all of those loved ones whose souls are working their way into the kingdom. Uh, so we pray, the Catholics pray for those. But as Protestants, Presbyterians, we believe in the priesthood of all believers. That believer, there are not some believers who are better than others, but in the grace of Jesus Christ, God has called all of us sinners into the priesthood of all believers. As Protestants, we believe that Jesus and his works, not by our works, but in Jesus' work, when we are overwhelmed by that grace, we become the saints of God. If you look around, just think, oh my goodness, they're a saint? They are really in Christ's work? Yes. So friends, it's on this day when we go into the time work of time as we remember our loved ones who have gone before us, where Christ has been at work in their lives. And those loved ones invest time and energy and resources into our lives that we experience right now here in worship. But this love, this grace, this time that our predecessors have invested in us, will continue on after us. Your life is not just right now. Your life was being formed long before you were created in the womb. And your life will remain long after your body has been put into the ground because we are part of God's people. And the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. You see, for Ruth and Boaz and Naomi, they were already investing in Jesus' life. As Naomi took that grandchild, held her, him in her bosom. Jesus is coming. And Naomi is investing in that 1,300 years before Jesus came to be on earth. And as it was with Naomi and Ruth, just an ordinary family, so it is with me and you. Our lives have been formed by those who have gone before us. And we are not defined by that, but we are formed by the love and the grace of those who brought us to their bosom. And we live now. And what will live on in your life long after you've gone into the ground? Suddenly, all my ancestors are behind me and be still, they say. Watch and listen, for you are the result of a thousand loves. I will tell you a deeper mystery still. When we come to the communion table as Christians in that time warp where God was and is and is to come, we participate in this time warp every time we come to the communion table. A mystery. The Greek word from or the Latin word for mystery is sacramentum where we get our English word sacrament, because this is a mystery for us, because we believe here at the table, we are joined with all those saints of the past, the saints here and the saints to come. And in this time where we all dine and feast at this beautiful table of God, believing this is a foretaste of the table that is to come for us, that our ancestors are experiencing right now as they feast with their Lord Jesus Christ. And we get to feast with our ancestors every time we come to this mystery, the sacrament of the table. You may be wondering, I thought this was stewardship season. Where's the sermon about gift? Well, here it is. 
you've been given this blessing of time in your life. What will you do with the years that you've been given? In some ways, this is the most precious thing that you possess. And just like Naomi and Ruth nurtured that child so long ago, how will you nurture your children and grandchildren and your neighbor's children and the generations to come? If we give of ourselves and of our time, I take you back to Jesus' promise, give and it will be given unto you. So on your stewardship card, there's an opportunity for you to write down where you can give up your time to the church. Yes, this is important, and I really do encourage you to do that. But stewardship is much more than just volunteering an hour in the life of the church per week. It is about giving of the very most sacred part of yourself to something bigger than you. Something that will endure longer than you. Something that finds itself wrapped up in God. So may you, like Naomi, pick up the child of your time and invest your time in that which is good and endures forever. And the Christ who has been with you before you were ever formed in the womb. The Christ who is in your heart now. And the Christ who will call you home to your home in the future. This Christ will bestow blessings upon you. As Jesus says, give. And it will be given unto you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.